Hello, everybody. My name is Rod Gun. I am an artist. I'm a teacher, a mentor, an artist, cartoonist, illustrator, designer. And right now, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw some cool shit. So, this, like a couple minutes ago, not even a couple minutes ago, we just streamed about drawing legs. And if you guys want to see that video, it should be up on YouTube by the time you guys see this on YouTube. But if you guys are seeing this live right now, it's not up yet because I just literally ended it a couple seconds ago. So, that will be up soon. If you guys missed the leg one, please feel free to tune in sometime soon in order to actually watch it. Uh, but now we are going to talk about arms. We're going to talk about how the arms connect to our actual body. And we're going to talk about how the actual head in the rib cage are so tied in together that we can almost comically draw it in a really simple, funny way to make it just uh, stay in our brain like that forever. And it'll never go away and your characters will be just stronger and you'll be able to sketch really fun things without really having to think too much about what and where you're supposed to draw your things because you'll actually understand the the structure of it so let's talk about the torso and we'll talk about the rib cage and arm placement Rib cage slash head and arm placement. Okay. So, okay. This is a topic that has plagued most artists for most of their careers. How the hell do I measure my heads to my rib cage? How do I connect my neck to my heads without it looking weird? Why is the neck and the jaw so fucking hard? Well, after today, hopefully, something will click. Where's Mr. Clicky? Ta-da! So hopefully, something will click. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, guess what came in? Mr. Clicky keychains. Oh, so cute. So... These special guys are going to be going to very special people that have been helping me for a very long time. And actually, uh, I will eventually get more of them so that I can give them out and sell them. But for now, these are going to the special people that help me in my streams, that help me moderate, that help me uh, stay positive and happy, and that check in on me. So these are very special 30 people that are going to get some really awesome little keychains customly made for them. So... Mr. Clicky, let's start our lesson. All right, so before we start, where is it? You guys know the drill. You guys know the drill. You guys just did it a couple minutes ago and we got like 16,000 likes. Let's, uh, let's, let's up that. Let's make sure that we actually keep up with inflation here. Uh, let's make sure that we actually like up those numbers. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to prepare what is going to be our little teaching mannequin that is going to show you essentially the structure that comes alongside with drawing a rib cage and how we can modify that to make it anything we want okay regardless of the style so the first thing you are going to actually get to see right here is going to be me mapping out very important parts of an actual body part so I'm going to try to do it with as much detail into the anatomy structures of the drawings sections that we're going to draw right now. Okay, I'm going to split this in half so you guys see the simplification process and what comes alongside that process. So the actual concept of our actual arms is sometimes misunderstood. It's often misunderstood because of the way that we get taught. The way that we get taught sometimes uh, kind of doesn't help us down the line because we end up um, getting more, we get more knowledgeable about what we have to draw, but we don't ever update our software in our brain that lets us see things on a deeper level. So we stay at a point where we are drawing things really, really uh, 
detailed, but we don't know how to give them depth and we don't really know where to place them. So we end up with a really mixture of like really awesome detailed like you know penmanship but you have no knowledge about where things are supposed to go so you might think that your style is still a little bit unrefined and you don't really understand why you know like you see other people like progress and you see other people like growing their skill sets and like like just seem like what how is that person like growing so quickly how is that person improving so quickly how come i can't get it how come i can't understand this yet well, that it all comes down to actually remembering that foundations are exponential, right? The moment that you understand them, everything unlocks. So it's not necessarily um, like I just draw more than that person. It's do you draw more with the intent to learn or do you just draw more to just draw more? And that's normally the case with a lot of people. They just think that by drawing more and more and more and more and more, they're actually going to, let's make the ear smaller. We're going to make the, that's going to make up for the fact that they're not taking the time to study, right? And you need to study and you need to actually make sense of your actual body parts and how you create things in order to actually be able to uh, draw them, especially in a stylized way. So... If you do not have that knowledge and you don't feel like pursuing that knowledge, you're going to be plagued with the inability to be able to draw the things that you want. And you're going to work 10 times harder than other people and you're not going to get anywhere because you refuse to actually learn. So let's go on to our actual body part right here. So in order to actually achieve basic, basic structured anatomy that just makes things fall into place like I did right here, it's actually quite simple. The first thing that we do is we're going to not going to draw the head. The face is the, like the, probably the last part that I draw of the body. Um, the first thing we're going to draw is we're going to draw the rib cage. Now, the rib cage does not have to necessarily be this size. Right, this I'm gonna show you guys in a couple different elements so you guys can see that you can draw the rib cage in any way you want. It can be tall, it can be little, it's going to depend on what you want your character to be. Right? If you want your character to be like skinny and tall, you're gonna draw a taller rib cage. If you want a character to be wide like the Hulk, you're gonna have a wide rib cage. If you're gonna have a person that's just anorexic, you're gonna have a really skinny rib cage. In this case, we are just focusing on what's inside of our body as opposed to actually all the little details that come along with, oh, am I drawing it in the right size? No, we're drawing what's there and then you determine the size of it. So, so to match whatever you need. So let's start with a standard one right here and we'll have a rib cage by drawing a little egg shape. Now I'm going to find the middle of my shape, not just by drawing a line in the middle, but I'm gonna draw a circle to give it a slight turn and it gives me the front and the back of my body immediately. So drawing a circle inside of that shape gives me the front and it gives me the back. If I draw it really thin, I get almost like a frontal view, but I still get a lot of information. And instead of just drawing it completely flat or completely profile, I like to draw these like that so I get a better understanding of the roundness of my shape, okay? So that is, the first thing that I do and the first thing that I'm thinking about. Then the other thing is going to be how big is my head going to be correlated to this actual body. Now, if I want a standard, a standard head, it's going to be a little circle at the top of your rib cage, a little bit smaller than the width of your actual rib cage, a little bit smaller. If you take that and you make it go up like a cylinder, you're going to have a very basic and very easy to understand structure that's gonna help you understand how a body and a face gets structured together, right? What happens if we change this little circle? Well, if we change the little circle around to different heights or even taper the actual circle or the, the cylinder, we get different head shapes. We get different styles. We get different things that we can do with this character. Right? Just from understanding that little connection, anything that I draw the head doing is going to be okay. The head can be moving from that position. 
right? They can rotate in space as long, again, just like we did with uh, the, the legs, as long as it's connecting back to this circle, which is the base of your neck, you can now draw any shape in space and it's going to look like it's coming from that section. So understanding where the position of your head is, is so much more important than understanding how to draw every feature. Because understanding this, now you can just draw a circle, a circle, a cylinder, and now you can have really simple characters, but now they're structured in a way that you can actually add really fun placements to them really quickly. And as you get better and more detailed, this helps you understand your designs in a whole other level because now you're going to know where your neck and your head connect at every time. And then if you want to, you could always move that circle even lower so you can have hunchbacked like characters or characters that have like maybe like really big shoulders like wow. You know, like super villains or hulking characters like Venom and stuff like that. Rawr. So understanding that that little circle in your rib cage can determine the size of your head incredibly quick is an incredibly important tool in your arsenal. Now let's play around with this concept. Let me show you guys what it would look like if you're actually drawing an illustration. So I'm drawing, drawing, to do do to do I'm just going to draw my cylinder. And then my knowledge of anatomy allows me to just be able to see simple shapes going around my neck. And just like that, I have the ability to draw something And then I get to choose where the middle of my rib cage is. I haven't even decided that. So the middle of my rib cage can be right here. I can rotate his body this way. Let's rotate his body this way. By determining this middle part, now the bottom of my ears connect to this. And that is how you determine your neck. Your neck muscles. Ta-da! So one more mapping point now we have the connecting points from our head to our actual eye. So let's start over. Let's go from step one again. So we're going to draw a circle. We're going to draw a circle inside of our circle to create a middle part for our rib cage. We're going to draw a little circle at the top, which is going to resemble like an eyeball. Okay. And this is going to play a part in this. Imagine that you are drawing like a cyclops shooting a laser beam up you know it's like so you have a laser beam eye shooting up your neck into a cylinder and then we draw cylinder lines the reason that we draw cylinder lines is because this allows us to look have the character looking up or down immediately like i don't have to guess if I can, my lines are going to be looking up or down these are ambiguous so i can draw a cylinder and have this be the bottom, or I could have this be the top. Either way, it gives me guidelines that I can use for my face. So in this case, let's have them looking up a little bit. So these are guidelines looking up, and then I know I just need a chin. So I just need my chin, and I need to connect my ears. The bottom of my ears connects to the edges of this. I taper it a little bit so that it actually has a stronger uh, aesthetic. And then from the bottom of my ears to the middle of my rib cage, I connect this so that I have my neck muscles. Cool. So just in like two seconds, we discovered how to draw uh, the right size head to the rib cage. And you can change this up all you want. That same cylinder. You can make that smaller by just making this shape smaller on top. Once you get used to the actual concept of just drawing a shape on top, you guys will understand 
that you'll be able to switch up your designs incredibly easy by simply changing one or two elements in your design. Again, so now we have like three adjustable parts, right? We have the rib cage that can be adjusted to any size we want. We can adjust this little circle at the top to be, be any shape we want, and it's going to give us a nice head, regardless of it being small or big. So if we draw it really big, this is gonna give us a nice wide head. Okay, if we draw it skinny, this is gonna give us a wider body and a skinnier head. So it's all proportions. It's all based on what you're going to want to do with the character, right? But now you understand where that connection happens. But let me, let's elaborate on this and actually learn how the rest of the body starts connecting. The next body part that goes on is going to be the collarbone. And the collarbone is incredibly easy to find, incredibly easy to find once you get to this stage, okay? So let's figure out this part is the collarbone right here, this, and it normally extends past your rib cage. So this is the part that's normally complicated for people to understand. How far out do we draw this? How far out, like how does this even connect? Like how do these muscles like overlap? Holy shit, draw like, dude, this is like annoying as hell and super hard. It's not. So think about it like this. You already drew the eyeball, right? We're drawing an eyeball at the top. All you gotta do is create the eyelids for the eyeball. And that gives you your arms where they're supposed to be. Now, these measurements, I'm going to explain them in a second, but this is where your actual body parts are supposed to roughly go from. So understanding that this little space that you draw is going to gear where your arms are leading is going to make you stop thinking of your actual shoulder as the bottom part of your actual arm. You're going to start thinking of your collarbone as the bottom part of your arm, which is technically more right than wrong. This is going to be because, look at this. If we have this, we have that, and we have our head coming out of here. Let's draw the head real fast so you guys see how cool this is to be able to draw from a cylinder. Cylinders are so much stronger than an actual like sphere. I just find them to be incredibly stronger, like as a shape to find and draw heads from. It's just easier for me. And I don't know why. I don't know why, but it just is. And it's, I, I want to share that with everybody because like it's so much easier. <laughs> So we have our head, we have our cylinder, and then let's say that we want our shoulders, but we want we don't know where our shoulders are going yet. So let's say that we want our shoulders down. So we are going to take those little wingy parts and we're gonna draw them down. That is going to lead to our arms starting right here. Right? And this is going to give us this sort of structure. The character looking down. Now, how, what are we like actually drawing when we're drawing this? So this front part of the actual body ends up being the collarbone. So when you draw that eye, you end up drawing the representation of that collarbone right here. So you draw that side of the eye and you end up simplifying that to a simple little line. The way that the arm connects is at the pinpoint of this edge. So at the very edge, you can literally draw a stick figure coming from there. And that will be the right place for your arm. We're going to focus on drawing thin cylinders to represent where our bone structure is. And then the cylinders help us determine which way our actual arm is going, right? These cylinders are going to help us determine which way our arm is supposed to go and just like the legs you guys will find that once we get to this point and we know we learn how to connect our shoulder and our pectorals the arm itself is a unit on its own so you don't really need to connect the arm or think about the arm connecting to the body anymore that's what the shoulder and the pectorals do these two muscles are the thing that connects to the bone and to the rib cage so the shoulder connects you to the collarbone in the front and the back of your body. 
and then the actual pectoral connects the actual arm to the actual rib cage. So your biceps and stuff like that are very easy to determine once you get to this point. So let's do a couple practice ones and then we'll get there and we'll understand it better and then we'll proceed. So first step, let's start from scratch. We're going to start head, a rib cage, middle line, eyeball to make it look like a cyclops shooting a laser beam up. And then we're gonna draw little wingy parts for our arms. Now this is going to determine how wide your arm is. You can make them small so you can have nice dainty shoulders for like a pinup, right? Or you can make them large and have a gigantic shoulder and it's long, uh, alongside a giant pectoral muscle and have a gigantic looking monster. <laughs> so the amount of complex like you know like structure you can do by just simply changing the size of one little element is very very big so you have a lot of flexibility when it comes down to wanting to draw the things proper but that also comes with if you don't draw these the same size right and you don't understand how to manipulate those little shapes if you draw them really big and really small and you don't take the sizing into consideration that's going to throw off your drawings a lot so remember that these every single part you draw depending on the size is going to give you a different result every puzzle piece is different every puzzle piece has its purpose and every puzzle piece is going to connect to something else so if you draw one off it's going to throw off all the other ones that's why we start small that's why we start simple like this before we start drawing any musculature or anything like that we work off our actual body like our anatomy our this is our just basic anatomical structure okay this is just representing our skeletal system that is all we are doing all we are doing is we are replicating that skeletal system to a more accurate level Okay, that is all we are doing when we are drawing this sort of shapes. And when we take those shapes and we just use them very simply and put them in space, you get the ability to draw really cool things really quickly. Let's see, where are the other ones? And posing just becomes a matter of understanding how to connect cylinders together from different mapping points. So once you understand these things a little bit better, you'll see how simple it becomes to be able to manipulate these shapes to be doing anything you want. And posing becomes that much easier, period. So, and that just comes with understanding very simple ways of connecting things. So now let's actually connect everything together in the body, uh, talking about the arms and the legs, and then like seeing how the rest of it connects, okay? So now let's draw an actual body shape right here. So we're gonna start with a circle. Rib cage, middle line, we're gonna draw our hip bones in the shape of a cylinder with curvy things in. We're gonna draw an eyeball at the top of our head and create our wings that are going to be for our shoulders. This is gonna be the collarbone in the front and this is gonna be the midline of our rib cage. If it's gonna be a woman, I need to make sure that the breasts are coming from here. And if I'm drawing men, the pectorals are gonna be coming from a little bit lower in the arm to create that width that I need. So if I'm drawing a woman, I'm going to be drawing my breast tissue coming in from here and then having its volume, creating kind of like a little heart in the front of my body, okay? You can base it off the collarbone or the back of the neck, depending on how perky or how, uh, you know, like volume as they are. So that is how you can come up with breasts, really, really easy. 
as a connecting puzzle piece. Then if I wanted to create a woman, this would probably be a little bit wider to get a much wider roundature, giving me my hip uh, hourglass shape. I'm going to make them a little bit wider too because I want my legs to come out of here. And then it just becomes a game of connect to cylinders. Connect the circle, connect to this circle, and then connect to a different circle, and then connect the edges. And then learn how to overlap the lines to create volume. Do the same thing here. Only I'm gonna make the circle bigger because I want it to come up forward a little bit more, and then I'm gonna move this really small to make it move back. So now I have two feet going in perspective, really cool, awesome. So now we talk about the arms. The arms in themselves connect at the edge of those little points of the actual eye. So, but how do you actually draw the arm? The arm is very similar to the actual legs. You're gonna have two sections to it, one, two, and then you're gonna have your hand. In the case of the foot, it was one, two, and then your foot. Right, Then a flat surface into tentacles. Flat surface into little tentacles. Cool. So we'll talk about the little te tentacles in a second in the hand, but let's focus on the actual like positioning of the arm. Once you find that little edge on the side of your eye, when you're drawing your basic rib cage and body shape, once you find that point, that is going to be the start of your arm. The end of the, like the first section of your arm or your elbow is going to end roughly where your rib cage ends. That is roughly going to be the measurement that you keep in mind whenever you are going for a standard looking character. The end of your rib cage equals the end of your first section of your arm. Then from there, to draw the muscles, you have to think about it like this, okay? Remember that the shoulder connects from the front and the back of your actual uh, body. Luckily, we drew the front and the back of our muscle. The front is our collarbone, right? So the front is our collarbone, but this back part is the back muscle into our cylinder that's our neck. So we already drew it. We already know the mapping point, so we don't have to worry too much about that. We just have to learn how to draw around it. So once we have our arm right there in our rib cage, we're gonna have this mapping point. One, we're gonna draw two points on the actual eye. One in the front, one in the back. That is going to be the connecting points of our shoulder. And then we decide on how wide we want our shoulder to be by going down. If we don't want it to be a really big shoulder, we wouldn't draw it really big. If you want it to be a really wide shoulder, we would draw it really small. So let's we'll keep it nice and standard. We'll keep it about halfway connect this dot to this dot, and this gives you the connection point in the front, and then just go around this shape to create the back angle, and it gives you a little pocket, which is a really nice measurement to have, especially when you're drawing things that are not necessarily in that position. Let's draw an arm that's not necessarily the easiest to draw, let's say like an arm going this way, okay? So we draw our side of our head, and then we're gonna think about all these measurements right here we talked about. So we have the front, we have the back, and we have the length. Connect, connect. And that gave me the perfect placement for my shoulder. Okay, let's do it facing up. Draw our arm, let's draw our arm going this way. We're gonna go Back, front, length, connect, go around. There's not much thought to it. And then this is where your pectorals and your arms would come into play. And I'll show you guys how to do that too in a second. But that is how your shoulder connects. Let's do it a couple more times and let's do it in like a big post-it note so you guys like can see the process in itself, okay? So we're gonna talk about the shoulder. Okay. The shoulder comes from the collarbone. We need to find the rib cage first. Okay. The rib cage size can be like a little egg. I like to draw a little circle inside to come up with the front and the back of it. 
Cool. So I do that. Then to find my collarbone, I'm going to draw a little circle at the top part of my actual rib cage. This is going to be towards the very top of your rib cage, about the top sixth or the top fourth at most if you're going with very exaggerated ones. So it's very high up on the rib cage. The reason being that this is going to be representing your collarbone. Ba -ba. So it needs to be essentially this is the base of your neck where these two join right here. That is the middle part of your actual base of your neck. You see that little like tiny like hole that you get right here in the middle of your rib cage, like right there. That is what you have right there. And that's important because that connects to your ears and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you guys really quickly. You have your ears, poo -poo -poo, the bottom of your ears would connect to that. And you, that's how you would start getting the shape for your neck muscles. Okay, so that is why it's important to understand that point. But now from there, we need to find where our shoulders go. So from here, having this little initial circle inside, we're going to draw two little wingy parts that are going to make it look like an eyeball. Right, so you end up with a shape that's kind of like this. You end up with the cylinder for your neck. Then you end up with the side muscles for your back. So the neck area has three parts. It has one, two, three parts. So if you exclude any of those, it's going to look a little weird. Your arms are going to go at the very edge of this, and they're going to come down. The first section is going to end up roughly where your rib cage ends. That is the length up onto your elbow. And then from there, the way your shoulder connects is like this. One point in the front, one point in the back, one point for length, connect, curve. And this gives you the little pocket that you need for your arm. Front, back, length. Front, back, length. Let's say that's the arm going down. And you end up having this little like pocket that shows you a little bit of the back, a little bit of the front, but it's really useful when you start overlapping things because you understand a little bit more of how your actual shoulder works. So it's very easy to find your shoulder by drawing an eyeball, shooting a laser beam <laughs> into um, three points. One, two, three and you end up with your shoulder. And then your actual arm muscles come from underneath that, so it's really easy to do that. And once you learn how to draw with your pectoral muscles, you combine everything together, and it looks really freaking cool. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about how the muscles in the pectoral muscles work. The pectoral muscles, are the ones that are like big muscly muscles in the chest. And that is normally going to be very easy to figure out by going from the pinpoint that you drew right here to the middle part of how wide you want them to go. And then I just connect them in a curve. They are underneath the shoulder, so they're going to overlap with the shoulder underneath. And then that is where the width of your actual arm comes in, and that is how they overlap. So from this point to the midpoint, that is my pectoral muscle. And then my actual arm muscles come out from there. And then my back muscles connect to my rib cage. And I have my whole structure super quick. So that is how you normally connect those parts. Let's put it into play and let's make it a thing. Choo -choo. Let's just cover some drawing stuff here. Let's draw another one. Okay, so now let's uh, draw it lightly so you guys see how it works. Let's draw lightly. I'm going to use those same guidelines 
to create a character. So this cylinder that comes up is essentially the connection to my ears. The jaw in itself can come up and actually have more volume on top of that cylinder, but that is the connection to your ears that you need to keep in mind. The reason that that's important is because when we change the styling of it and we want a head that's bigger than the actual neck, we need to keep that in mind because that's going to be the measurement. It's not going to be the measurement of the whole head. It's going to be the measurement to the ears. So once we have this, I have my neck muscles, one, two, three, connect that. I have my arm muscles, my chest muscles underneath here to my pectorals. And just like that, I have a whole body structure really quick. The neck's a little short, but. Let's draw another one. Let's draw a really big dude. Like, let's draw like a straight up, like, Super Saiyan dude or whatever. Let's draw a bigger volume for our head. Let's draw some really big shoulders. And then since I gave it more shoulders, there's going to need more space that needs to be filled in. So the muscles in itself are going to just be bigger because there's more space that you need to cover. So my pectoral now goes from here to here. So now it's gigantic. That muscle is huge. This is my collarbone in the front. So that just connects to where that middle point goes. And then you can just add your muscle fibers and crap like that. Your back muscles would create a bunch of that volume as well. And then you would go back down to your hip bones. So you end up with a big character. Now, if you just make the head smaller, you make the character look even bigger. Thank you so much for teaching us to draw. I hope two galaxies is enough to show you appreciation. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, you guys don't really need to do much like at all to appreciate what I do. Honestly, like I do this out of the kindness of my heart because I struggled a lot when I was uh, learning how to do these things. So I struggled so much that it caused hindrances. And like, I saw so many people quit from not being able to do things that were simpler to other people. You know, I saw so many of my colleagues just like straight up quit back when I was in college and stuff. And I don't want that to happen to people. So uh, I get on here every morning. Uh, it has turned into my full-time job to do this. Uh, so I do this in the morning. I upload videos and stuff like that to YouTube. And then I just make the companies pay for it. Like I don't make you guys pay for it. Like you guys don't need to pay for my shit. Like my knowledge should not come at a cost unless it's like one-on-one, -on -one, right? If it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's different. Like you guys are asking for my time and then, then it's different. But if I have the ability to draw and show you guys something cool every day, because I'm going to draw anyways. But if I can show you guys how to draw something really cool, why wouldn't I? So these concepts apply even if you're drawing something that is the head first. The concept of the eyeball into the shoulders is the same. So you just have to, that gives you just the spacing that you need for your things, right? Understanding that you can like do this forwards, backwards, in between. And once you learn the process, you will be able to draw these things from all different angles. Like you can, you're going to be able to start with your face. You're going to be able to start with your eyes. You're going to be able to start with your nose. You're going to be able to start with anything and be able to just backtrack into different things. Let's say that we wanted to start, I don't know, with that eye at the top. Boop, boop, boop. So this already gives me the width of my rib cage, right? So I already know the size of the rib cage. I already know the size of the head too because of that. So... I already know the size of my shoulders. Maybe I want smaller shoulders. Maybe I want a different position. Maybe I want one shoulder small and one shoulder big so it looks like it's coming in to perspective. You know, so I can 
literally just change the pose on the fly. And if they have clothing, it's very easy to draw the clothing because that eyeball is literally the collarbone for your t-shirts. So, ta-da! Like, if you're wondering how people draw super quick, it's because they figure stuff out like this. Like, things like this is the reason that people are able to draw on the subway really quickly or people like me can do caricatures in 10 seconds, you know? It's just... Uh, Maybe not 10 seconds, but I've done some easily in 20, 25 seconds. And it's just a matter of uh, understanding where things go so that you can be creative. So once you get all this stuff out and you understand where things are supposed to go, well, then you get to be creative. You can change the size of things to make them um, fit within shapes that you already drew. Right? And then things just become a little bit easier to draw and it becomes a lot more fun because now you can focus mostly on creating instead of actually focusing on hey, is this looking right is this looking wrong you can just focus on drawing the things that you want and as, as stylized as you want it to Like you will not be subjugated to drawing things just like how other people do it. And once you find like your way of drawing, you're going to be all loosey goosey and you're going to have so much fun because all you're going to have to do is find a couple mapping points. And then from there, everything else is just basic cylinders connecting down to the head shapes. So, ta -da. and this applies later on to faces and stuff like that too. So once you learn the very basics of drawing through your shape, like being able to find elements like your ears just takes drawing through your shape. If you learn how to draw your ears, then you can connect your ears and that becomes your jaw, right? And then when you understand that your jaw isn't normally seen from both sides, it's only seen from one side, then you'll understand sometimes when you get to see the other ear and you don't get to see the other ear because your actual body, learning how to draw through them allows you that ability. Drawing through your shape gives you your hair lines, right? Gives you the ability to draw hair in the proper place. So now that I know how to hair, like where my hairline is, I can draw anything that comes out of that hairline up and down, left and right, up, whatever, as long as it connects back to that hairline, it's gonna look like hair. So I can go crazy and it's not going to look wrong. Same thing with our body features. If we understand how the flow of our body works, which I like to teach in the way of a triangle, if you understand that concept, you can learn how to draw your bodies and faces incredibly quick without much hesitation and you can get a lot more work done or you can just conceptualize things easier just for fun. So that is the power of actually learning to draw through your shapes. And that power comes from just learning how to draw a circle and drawing circles inside of your circles. Ear, ear, chin, jaw, face, cylinder, eyeball. <laughs> Just taper it for style, keeping those same mapping points. <laughs> and if you don't want to make it a nice, big, strong dude with pigtails, you can just change the proportions and make a character that's a little more dainty. Change the proportions slightly, and it changes a lot. You know, so I can go from like a shoulder like that to like a shoulder like that, really, really big, really quickly. So you have to be careful with these landmarks because they are going to adjust. They're going to adjust everything you're drawing after that. So if you mess up on the base, you're just going to end up drawing unproportioned the rest of it. 
But the proportions themselves are all based on what you draw. So if you think that something looks too big, just draw it a little smaller. So if you see that your bodies, for example, you're drawing your bodies, right? And you see that your legs are really small, right? And you don't know how to fix it. Well, you already know the problem. Just make them longer. Take that section. Don't adjust anything else. Those puzzle pieces, you know, like from the hip down, these puzzle pieces that you draw, just learn how to draw those the size that you want, as opposed to the size that you don't. And when you learn that size is just relative to perspective, you'll understand that that's just something silly to think about. <laughs> I can draw a really big hand da -da, da -da. and I can draw a really tiny hand and it's gonna look like it fits because it's connected to the right place Bam. it's just gonna look like it's in space like farther down blah, blah, blah. so like I said sizing and everything is relative to how much knowledge you have about the topic so if you know how to move things in space, it's gonna be really easy for you to draw things in space and move them in space. And that's what I like to teach you guys so that you guys aren't like, you know, like limited. So hopefully this lesson and the lesson before this help you guys out a little bit more on your journeys. Um, it helped me a lot to understand these topics the way that I explained them to you guys. And hopefully that is enough of an actual lesson for you guys to go out and be inspired to go out and create and draw and uh, learn. And more than anything, just be excited about doing art again. You know, that's like, that's the biggest thing that normally kills careers. Like learning that what you want to do as an artist is really hard, so you backtrack from it. And then you go into simple things, and then you end up uh, having fun with it for a while, but then it's not really what you wanted to do, you know? So it, it, it just eats up at you. It eats up at you. It eats up at you. And eventually it gets to the point where you don't understand why you hate art anymore. Like, why do I dislike art? What is it? Like, I, I've always loved art. Why don't I like it anymore? And it's because you spent so much time doing artwork that was not for you. Artwork that was for other people, for profit, or for just the likes, or whatever the hell you decided to go do it for. Uh, but it's not for you. So the moment that you start making art for yourself again, and you get excited about learning things that are going to benefit you, that's when the spark kicks back in, and you hopefully get that when you actually listen to me teaching you guys how to draw. I've heard, I've heard that I, I have that effect on people. So hopefully today is one of those days. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Hope you guys uh, benefited from my lesson today. Uh, I'm going to go eat some food and I'm going to start looking up uh, the addresses for the people that are going to get some of these guys. So see you guys soon. If you guys want to support the cause, Milky, come tell them what they can do if they want to do something to help the cause. Zoom out. Hi, everybody. My name is Milky. And I am his assistant because uh, he doesn't look out for himself. So if you guys want to help support this guy and you guys learned a lot, you guys can buy books that you guys can draw over. Kind of like coloring books, but meant to teach you how to draw and do all these cool things. So those are Art Block, and they are in his description. There's two of them. They're 100-page books, so full of doodles, thousands of doodles for you guys to learn from, reference from, and use to your own advantage. And there's also a couple really cool books. One has really cute girls in it. Like, really cute girls. It's 100 pages of cute girls. You guys should check it out. It's called Pinups. And we also have Coffee Break Doodles, which is the very first book I released. Uh, I just have it there because I'm super proud of actually having done it. Nothing that you guys see or do or hear from after that is like, that's all thanks to that book being released. I felt so proud of doing that, that it just made me want to continue. So thank you so much. If you guys feel like purchasing those books, each one of those sales helps me buy new equipment and pay my rent. So... And you guys get something cool out of it. So you guys don't have to donate, right? 
the only reason, the only way that I accept people's money is if you guys get something cool out of it. That's it. So have a wonderful day, everybody. You guys are amazing. And at the end of my streams, I normally like to send you guys off with a nice little message to have you guys have a nice, happy, full heart and full of joy and inspiration. So let's leave this stream with a couple nice messages, okay? Four kind words or uh, four kind phrases that are going to help you have a better day. Number one, I want you guys to love a little. And that means I want you guys to go out into the world and create some joy for someone, even if it's just for yourself. If you go out and you actually buy an ice cream for yourself, you have created this and you have successfully done something for, you know, someone in the form of love. So go out and love a little. Okay. I want you also, as artists, we need to live our lives to, in order to actually be able to recreate things from it. So in order to draw better, you need to go out and actually enjoy your life, go out outside, and I want you guys to live a little. Okay. I also want you to spend some time today actively searching for ways to make yourself enjoy yourself. Laughter, joy, happiness is a very, 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 very important factor in our life. So you need to make sure that you laugh a little. And since we are artists, there's one simple thing that we can't get away from. And that is the simple fact that we need to draw as much as we can. Normally, 15 minutes a day is normally enough as long as you have targeted, purposeful learning, right? If you spend 15 minutes trying to learn something new, eventually it'll help you succeed and help you grow into a better artist. If you're just spending your time drawing endlessly without a purpose, you are might be reinforcing things that you don't want to reinforce. So you got to make sure that every time that you sit down and draw, it has a slight purpose, even if it's just to tell a story or just to improve in a single topic, method or fashion or skill. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Milky, say bye to them. Bye. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for another lesson or later tonight if I get really bored because these are my days where I get to just go all out. So if I have something new to teach, I will do it. If you guys want to find out any more videos and you guys want to learn more from what I do, uh, I give out free lessons every day just to make sure that people have a resource and a network of people, a community that allows them to be creative and not feel like they are outsiders. I want to make sure that people in the chat understand that you guys are here to build a community and to learn from each other. Uh, you guys can learn from me all you want, but you guys need to also understand that so many create, we have like 900 people in the chat right now. And all of you guys are creative, amazing human beings that have the power to create things from nothing. So all of you have amazing potential. All of you guys can get together if you wanted to and take over the world if you so feel like it. Uh, so go out, enjoy your lives, do what you want, do art for you. Don't let your employers like drain all your like creative energy out of you. And if you are going through art school, make sure to make the most of it because that shit's expensive and it fucking drains you. So make sure that you are making the most of that shit. Do not fuck around because that is your future. And that is something that you really need to consider, especially since you are putting a shit ton of money in this. So anyways, students, go pay attention to that shit. Everybody else, have a wonderful day. And I love you all. Talk to you guys soon. And uh, yeah, bye.